Okay, welcome back. This time I want to talk about uh, real and integer valued polynomials. So, what do we mean by this? So, let us uh, begin by considering sort of the most general uh, constants. So, for us a polynomial is uh, let us say a 0. So, recall a polynomial for us was an expression of the form a 0 plus a 1 x a 2 x squared and so on. Power d. Now, the most general thing we could do for now is to allow the a i's, the, the uh, coefficients, to be complex numbers. Okay. So, let us assume, say, let a i uh, belong to C, which is the set of complex numbers. So, this is the set. Okay. So, we will just call these complex polynomials, polynomials where all coefficients are complex. So, what is a typical example you could take? Uh, so, let us see I have 1 plus i times x plus let us say 2 plus i times x squared, where i of course, is uh, the, the complex unit the square root of minus 1. So, here is a polynomial whose coefficients are 1 i and 2 plus i, which are all complex numbers. Now, what we want so, when I said real and integer valued polynomials, let me take the first case, I let me I want to look at real valued polynomials. So, here is the problem given uh, given a polynomial as above p of x with complex coefficients. Um, such that with an additional condition that p of x is real whenever x is real. Okay. So, I want to look at this, uh, a polynomial which has the property that whenever I plug in a real number x, then the answer p of x is also a real number. Okay, so, this is what I want to call real valued polynomials, they take real values on real numbers. Then what can I say about the coefficients? So, the question is this given this polynomial, what can one conclude about the coefficients a i? Okay. So, let us just sort of look at uh, the expression here p of x looks like this. Now, one of the most obvious ways of constructing such a polynomial, how would we get an example of such a polynomial? Observe if all a i is are real numbers. So, r is the set of real numbers. If all the coefficients are already real numbers, then p certainly satisfies this property. Then p of x satisfies this property, right. So, if I if I do not have any of my i's appearing anywhere, right, if it is just 1 plus x plus 2 x squared for instance, then if I plugged in x to be a real number, of course, I would get a real answer. right? So, here is one way of constructing such polynomials, you can take all the coefficients to be real numbers, but is this necessary, is this the, the only way of obtaining a real valued polynomial. Okay? So, we will see in just a moment the answer is yes, that you really do need to have all coefficients to be real, only then can this property be true. Okay? So, uh, here is the claim. if
that in fact the converse is true that if p of x has this property then the coefficients have to be real numbers there is no other way out ok. So, let us try and prove this the proof itself is rather easy. So, what does it mean to say that p of x is a real number whenever x is a real number. So, it says that p of x bar so let x be a real number then we are given that p of x is real number. So, this implies that p of x is real. So, let me write it like this. Now, a real number so now we, we need to recall a little bit about complex numbers remember we have a notion of conjugation complex conjugation in uh, the, the set of complex numbers it maps i in some sense to minus i right. So, the conjugate of 1 plus i would be 1 minus i. So, here is the property if p of x is a real number then that implies that p of x is the same as its conjugate ok. So, in other words so, let us compute the conjugate. So, if I take a 0 plus a 1 x a d x power d that is p of x. So, that is the left hand side the right hand side is the conjugate of this expression. So, I need to think of this as being a conjugate, but again the, the well known properties of conjugation say that if you have a sum of complex numbers and I want to take their conjugate it is a conjugate of each individual term. So, this is just nothing but the conjugate of a 0. So, remember a 0, a 1, a 2 are potentially complex numbers for now. So, it is the conjugate of a 0 plus the conjugate of a 1 times the conjugate of x plus the conjugate of a 2 times the conjugate of x squared and so on. Conjugate of a d conjugate of x times power d. So, that is what you get when you take conjugate on the right hand side. But observe I have said that x is a real number which means that x is its own conjugate right. So, real numbers are their own conjugate. So, in fact x bar is the same as x because of the assumption that x is real. So, I can just remove the bars on the x's ok. So, here is the conclusion that a 0 plus a 1 x plus a d x d is the same as a 0 bar plus a 1 bar x plus blah 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 for all real numbers x for all real x. But now observe that the left hand side you can think of as you know here is a polynomial of degree d a 0 plus a 1 x plus a d x d the right hand side is another polynomial of degree d which is a 0 bar plus a 1 bar x plus a 2 bar x squared and so on right. So, think of so let us call that uh, another polynomial. So, maybe we will just call it uh, p q of x maybe let us call here is another polynomial of, of degree at most d and what we are claiming is that p of x the polynomial p and the polynomial q agree they are equal for all real real numbers x for all real x ok. Now, observe this principle that we talked about uh, a few modules ago which is if I have a polynomial of degree d another polynomial of degree d and if they agree on d plus 1 points ok they have the same value on some d plus 1 points then they must have the same value on all points meaning they are actually exactly the same polynomial ok. But then observe for every real number x I, I know that they actually agree right and there are infinitely many real numbers. So, agreeing on on infinitely many points will mean they surely agree on d plus 1 points. So, therefore, p and q so, the polynomials p and q agree on in fact on infinitely many points on all real numbers and since they, they have degree at most d this means that p and q are exactly the same polynomial. So, p equals q. So, let me just write So, what does that mean the polynomial a 0. So, p is the polynomial a 0 plus a 1 x plus a d x d is the same as a 0 bar plus a 
So, these two are exactly the same polynomials. Now, what does it mean to say they are the same polynomials? It means that the coefficients are all the same a 0 is the same as a 0 bar, a 1 is the same as a 1 bar x and so on. So, these are identically equal polynomials. Okay. So, maybe so it is sort of a little bit like this equality, but this equality is thought of as only holding for all real values x. This equality actually holds for all complex values x if you wish, since they are identically the same polynomial. So, this means that a 0 is the same as a 0 bar, a 1 is the same as a 1 bar and so on. Every coefficient is, is equal, but then this means that a 0 is a real number the next condition means a 1 is a real number, the next condition means a 2 is a real number and so on. So, this in fact implies that all a i's are real. Okay. So, that is in fact the proof of the converse. The only way you can get a, a complex polynomial to take real values on real numbers is if all the coefficients are themselves real numbers. Now, here is an interesting variant of this problem which is sort of the second part of the title. Uh, what if you wanted integer values? Okay, so, let p of x be like this with a i. So, let us for now consider real valued polynomials for instance. I mean uh, yeah exactly coefficients being reals with a i s in r. Now, I want these to have integer values on integers. Suppose, I tell you the following that p of x. So, let me call it p of n is an integer. So, z is denotes the set of integers. p of n is an integer whenever n is an integer for. So, when so here is the condition that is given that p takes integer values when you plug in an integer for x. Okay. Then the question is what can you conclude about the coefficient? So, again the same question. So, uh, problem what can one say about the a i the coefficients ok and observe a similar thing can serve as a starting point if all the a i s are integers. So, if for instance your polynomial is just you know 1 plus 2 x plus 3 x squared and so on or you know any other integer choices for the a i s then plugging in x equals an integer will of course, give you an integer answer. So, observe similarly just like before that. So, I am just going to modify right here. If a i s are integers if a i is an integer for every i. So, I should say for all i. then p of x certainly satisfies this property. Okay. Now, what we really want to worry about is sort of the converse. Is it true that that is the only possibility? Is it possible that a polynomial takes integer values on, on integers, but the polynomial does not necessarily have integer coefficients. Okay. So, it turns out that the converse is actually not true in this case. So, here is an example which will sort of demonstrate this fact. Let us define p of x to be the polynomial x into x minus 1 by 2. So, here is a polynomial whose degree is 2, it is x squared minus x divided by 2, right. So, let us write it out fully, it is x squared divided by 2 minus x divided by 2. So, it is a degree 2 polynomial it does not have integer coefficients because the coefficients are in fact half and minus half right so the coefficients are clearly not integers okay not all coefficients are in integers what you need in general here in fact both coefficients are not integers so now the question is uh, what do we know about integer values for x. So, let us compute p of n when n is an integer. So, let n be an integer and let us calculate p of n. p of n turns out to be n well it is n into n minus 1 by 2 by definition right. Now, 
n is an integer n minus 1 is the one preceding integer right. So, this is the product of two successive integers and then you are dividing the answer by a 2 ok. Now, observe that if I have two successive integers. So, n and n minus 1 are two consecutive integers Now, when I have two consecutive integers one of them will be odd and the other will be even right. So, which implies one of them is odd the other is even. So, I really only care about the even part. So, one of them is an even number which means that it could be either of them it could be n or n minus 1, but whichever of them it is when I divide it by 2 what I will get will be will be a whole number will be an integer again right. So, therefore, it is divisible by 2. So, uh, the numerator is an even number being the product of an even and an odd number therefore, is divisible by 2. So, therefore, in other words p of n is in fact an integer ok. So, observe here is a polynomial which has the property that we wanted that whenever you substitute an integer for x then what you get as an answer is again an integer, but the coefficients themselves are not integers the coefficients are half and half right. In spite of that it turns out that this gives you integer answers ok. So, it is it is somewhat mysterious at this point, but uh, so I am going to defer this for later what I would uh, like you to do in the meantime we will we'll come back to this uh, in a few modules from now in a somewhat different context, but uh, for now I would like you to think a little bit about this and see what best you can do or for a start try and construct more such polynomials sort of by using the same idea. So, find a few more such polynomials and try and see if you can find out what the general situation needs to be ok. okay. So, next time what we will do is to talk about uh, many variable polynomials.